so hello and welcome friends to our channel intro mech and here we discuss about basic mechanical engineering things so today we are going to discuss about how we can select a pneumatic rotary actuator now when i say rotary actuators there can be electric rotary actuator also but we will be focusing on the design considerations in selecting a pneumatic rotary actuator so without wasting time let's get started so you have to sign in to the SMC site. When you log in into the site, uh, you will have this interface. You have to go into the products, go into the actuators and the rotary actuators. There are different types will be available. We will be going with the rack and pinion type of actuator. Then there are North American specifications, which will be in inch mode. And in Indian, we go for the metric specifications. So go in the metric specifications. So as soon as you enter into the metric specification, you will observe a lot of different varieties here according to the precision, accuracy and different applications. So we will start uh, with the basic model that the MSQ model and we'll see how we can select the, uh, uh, this model. Then again, there will be subtypes available. Uh, you can see and read what are the specifications. So we will go again with the basic standard type so as soon as you enter you will can see the different specifications mentioned here so first you have to go to the manual section that series catalog because a lot of information there is in the series catalog here you could observe that is the rotary table and rack and pinion type that indicates its mechanism rack and pinion and the size is available and you can see what is the specification of this series then you can scroll down what are its salient features you can see the what are the cushions available in this type cushion pads are there bumpers are there internal shock absorbers are there so you will understand what are these things and how they affect the selection so you can see the graphs then there is a type that how we can select so steps are given we have to calculate the moment of inertia, which is the most important part while selecting a rotary actuator. Then we have a torque. We have to focus on the rotation time. Then we have to think about the kinetic energy and whether the part can take allowable load or not. That is also required to be checked. So if you scroll down, there are a lot of different lists of formulae are given that how you can select a part because the moment of inertia is very important thing and according to your part size and shape the moment of inertia will vary so there will not be a specific particular formula with which you can calculate that will modify according to your application so they have mentioned some basic types so don't worry we are going into a particular example and you will understand how it works so they are also given some graphs and what is your load type so according to that your torque also changes so this all information they have mentioned in the catalog all you need is your system inputs and according to that finally you can select your series so let's explore this with the help of a, a practical example so Let's move on to the example. Now here uh, you can observe that th this portion is our rotary actuator. I am attaching a lever here and in th this is the top view. So in the front you can observe that here I have attached a pneumatic cylinder and a gripper and the red portion is my part which I have to grip it and I have to place it from this position to this position so the rotary actuator will move that part from this position to this position so how we could see it will rotate like through 90 degrees my angle of rotation is 90 degrees that is my system requirement and uh, let's see what are other specifications so you can see this is my lever portion and this is the cylinder and the gripper and the red portion is my block now here i have given some values our length of the lever which is l then diameter of the cylinder 
then dimension of the grippers, our dimension of the block, then mass of the lever, mass of the cylinder, gripper and block. All this information is required in order to determine the moment of inertia. Now here you could see the different moment of inertia formally according to the shape of the object. So for the lever, uh, the I1 for the moment of inertia can be find out as the mass of the lever into L square by 3. So with the help of these formulae, we can find out the moment of inertia. So here are the sample calculations, right? So with the help of these formulae and these input values, we have calculated all the moment of inertia of the systems like I1, I2, I3 and I4 and totally we have to consider the total moment of inertia so that's how we have calculated the total moment of inertia of the system so this is a important step then move on to the next step so here uh, our angle of rotation is like 90 degrees you can see we are rotating the part from 90 degrees so that is essential pi by 2 radians i have just converted into the radian and the rotation time is one second. This is my system requirement according to my say cycle time calculations. I want to move this part from zero degrees to 90 degrees in one second. So this is my another requirement. So let's see. Uh, these are the different load types which they have mentioned. So from these types, we have to see that which orientation we have so if you see the inertial load the third type this resembles to our system like our arm has an angular velocity so we have to find out the ta value that is the torque that is the required torque of the system and for safety purpose this 10 factor we have considered so how we can find out the torque that is the, here comes the moment of inertia term into the omega that will be the angular velocity of the system that is nothing but 2 theta by t square so these parameters are required so let's calculate so here we have our ta value we have inserted the moment of inertia i value which we have just calculated we have the other values so finally the system torque requirement we got is 0.76 newton meter right so let's see what other parameters we have to consider so we have to consider the kinetic energy of the system also because all the parts are rotating so there should be some system uh, inside the rotary actuator that can take that much of energy so that's why the energy calculations also play an important role so if the system is like linear we all know that the kinetic energy is one half m square now here is the thing that our system is in angular form so that's why the mass will get replaced with the moment of inertia and the velocity will be replaced with the angular velocity so after putting all the values you can get the energy value then again important thing is we have to check that the moment coming on the body should should be within the range so you could see the length of the lever and its mass will be acting through its uh, CG and all these uh, parts like cylinder gripper and this part I have considered their total mass and let's consider approximately the CG is acting through uh, this axis so it will be acting from L distance from the center of our part right so let's calculate the moment so you can have a moment here so weight one will be my m1 we have mass of the lever and the g times that is 5 newtons and w2 is the summation of all the masses right so how we can find out the moment so we have w1 will be acting through l by 2 distance and the total m will be acting through l distance so uh, my system should sustain a moment of 1.72 newton meter now we have calculated all the system specifications that means my torque requirement then my energy requirement my moment requirement now we have to check that which 
part can satisfy all these conditions. So that is why it is important that instead of jumping to selection after calculating only one parameter, we first we have to calculate all the parameters and then we should shift for the selection. So let's shift for the selection of the part. Now here I have summarized all our calculations. So what is our system requirement? We have calculated all these parameters and now we have to check which part can satisfy these requirements. So first if we consider the torque, only torque requirement. So here you could see the effective torque chart and the operating pressure let's consider a 5 bar pressure. So if you consider only this torque requirement, you can say that this is above my this torque requirement. So we can go for this value, but don't do hurry and see all other parameters. My kinetic energy requirement is 0.12 Joule. So if I select this 10 value and if you could see here the allowable kinetic energies, you cannot select this part because it is not satisfying this condition at all. So that's how you have to look out. So let's consider the system should consider this 0.12 Joule energy, right? So uh, if we see 0.12 Joule energy, we can uh, have these well, uh, the 50 part and again there are options with the cushion pad or bumper or internal shock absorber, right? So we can have this 0.162 so this can satisfy our condition so if we select this 50 part model we can see the its effective torque 4.64 that is also satisfying this condition energy is already satisfying my condition then if we consider the moment then it is also getting satisfied and if we see the adjustable range of the rotation time so here we are going with the bumper so for the bumper we have time range of 0.02 to 2 seconds and our time is 1 second which lies within this range so that's how we can finally select this 50 part with bumper so how we can select the part this msq is our more our series we have selected 50 so msq we have 50 then we are going with the bumper that's how d comes so this has completed our model and this m9bw part is a sensor part so we uh, don't have to worry about it right now so this portion is important for uh, from our point of view and this is how we have selected the part and we have calculated all our requirements and from that finally we have selected our part so let's see how our part looks so as we have selected our part let's put all the information here size we have 50 then cushion we have bumper so that will be uh, like d then auto switch we are selecting a switch that is nothing but considering the position and here we have completed our part number we can see so our part number has completed. Let's see how it looks into 3D. So you have to go into 3D and here is our model. So from the top you can mount the lever and it has a ports, different ports. So you can mount there lever. And if you could see, it has pneumatic ports from the sides. You can observe here the pneumatic ports. These are the bumpers adjustment and on the top these are the pneumatic input holes so this is how it looks and these are the mounting holes this is the actual mounting of the total part so this is how we can uh, select the complete pneumatic rotary actuator with the help of all our system requirements so i hope you understood the small things and the basic design calculations involved in selecting these uh, rotary actuators and if you have any doubts or any suggestions please do write into the comment sections until then stay home stay happy thank you